Hi everyone and welcome back to our next video. In this video we're going to take a look at how you can draw an arc. So if you were going to draw say the letter D, we're going to need to figure out how we can draw an arc in order to draw a letter like D. First thing though, we need to go and take a look at something you're going to take a look at in math later on and that is drawing angles in what we call standard position or the coordinate plane. Recall that we can have a x and y axis like this and we can draw an angle inside this, the Cartesian plane. The way we do that is we need a starting point. So we're always going to use this side of the x-axis and that side is called the initial arm. So we always start measuring from that side of the x-axis, and that's the initial arm. If I'm measuring a positive angle, I'm going to start from the initial arm, which is here, and I'm going to go in this direction if I'm measuring a positive angle. If I'm measuring a negative angle, I'm going to go in this direction here. So, for instance, if I wanted to measure, say, the angle, let's say, 70 degrees. Well, I know that from here to here, that's a 90 degree angle. So, 70 is less than 90. So, if I always start from the initial arm to here, this angle here would be about 70 degrees. If I started from here and measured the negative angle and I go this way, then this angle would be negative 70 degrees. So that's how we measure angles in the Cartesian plane. We start with the initial arm, and the arm that we end up with is actually called the terminal arm. So here's the initial arm, here's the terminal arm. Now, if we just go back, I'm going to show you another way we can do this. You're going to learn in math that we can use degrees to measure angles, or we can measure in something called radians. So if we measure in degrees, we start at the initial arm. This would be 0 degrees. This would be 90 degrees. Keep going. This would be 180 degrees. Keep going, another 90 degrees, this is 270, so 270 degrees. And then if I go another 90, I'm back full circle, I've made a 360 degree rotation. In other words, one full rotation. That is using angles. And if I want to do angle measurement in degrees, it would look like that. If I wanted to do angle measures in radians. Here's the way it works in radians. What you're going to do is start out at zero here and what you're going to learn is that if I start here at the initial arm and I go halfway around it actually comes out to pi number of radians. So half a rotation is pi radians. If I go another half and I go all the way around to here, well, pi plus pi is 2 pi. So one full rotation is actually 2 pi in total as a measurement. So 360 degrees, one full rotation is the same as 2 pi radians. That's one full rotation. If I only go part way, so if I just erase some of this, and let's just say that I start here from zero radians and I go to here, well I know that if I go this far, that's pi radians. If I only go this far, well that's pi divided by two radians. If I wanted to start from here, the initial arm, and let's say I go to here, well that's pi over two radians. That's pi radians. If I go that far, then it's 3 pi over 2 radians, which is really the same as 1.5 radians. One full 
rotation would be 2 pi radians. So why are we looking at all this? Well, the way that the arc command works in processing is it uses radian measurement. So we have to understand how this works. So let's minimize this and go take a look here. We're going to take a look at the arc command. And the way the arc command works is as follows. We have a number of numbers in here. These are actually called arguments. We haven't talked about that before, but these numbers inside are arguments. Notice we have one, two, three, four, five, six arguments. We need to know what each one of those arguments means. Well, the first pair represents the center of the arc. So think of the arc as part of a circle. The center would be right here. This is the point 150, 150. The next two represent the radius of the arc. This represents the x portion of the radius, if you will. This represents the y portion of the radius. If they're both the same, that means the radius is the same. So this is 80 pixels here. This is 80 pixels here. Notice if I change this, let's say to 180, well, this is the y radius. This is the x radius. So watch what happens. It actually stretches it down in the y direction more than it does the x direction. So that's what it does. Let me go back and make those the same and run it. And again, we're back to here. Now, how does it know where to start the arc and where to finish? Well, that's where we use radians. And the way that it works is it starts from here and it actually goes in the clockwise direction. So we're actually going to start here and it says starting at zero. Well, that's this point right here. So this represents the starting angle. Starting angle is zero. And it always draws in the negative direction. In other words, clockwise. It always goes this way. Remember, it's going to go to pi. Well, remember, pi is half a circle. So it starts here, and then it goes all the way around up to here and finishes. If I wanted to, say, start from here and only go down to here, well, that is half of pi. And I can actually type in half underscore pi. That will tell it to start here and finish here. So if I run this, you can see that's exactly what it does. It starts here and it finishes right at this point. If I wanted to, I can erase this here and I can put in 1.5 times is shift 8. I'm going to go 1.5 pi. Well, that's going to start here. And where is it going to finish? Well, you could guess. Yeah, it goes all the way around to there. So it starts here, and it goes all the way around. This is 1 pi. 1.5 pi takes it to here. If I take this out and I put in a 2, well, what did we say the 2 pi was? 2 pi radians is one full rotation. It's going to start here. It's going to go all the way around and actually going to end up where it started. So if I run it, yeah, sure enough, that's exactly what I get. If I come back here and I change it to a little bit less than 2, let's say 1.9, it's not going to make one full rotation for the arc. Instead, it's going to look like this. So that is how you use the arc command. The first two arguments represent the center of the arc. This represents the x radius. This is the y radius. This is the starting point of where it's drawing the arc. And this is the finishing point where it ends the arc. We need to know what all six of these arguments mean in order to use the arc command. That's it for this video. I would practice using this. Why would we use something like this? Well, actually, if you think about the game Pac-Man, Pac-Man just uses a symbol like this, and we get it to move, but it's basically just using an arc in motion. So later on, you'll be able to make your own Pac-Man move around the screen by using the arc command. 
that's it for this video thanks for watching we'll talk to you next time